40 kilometers along the Mediterranean coast from Monte Carlo on the Riviera di Ponenti lies the Italian resort of San Remo. It plays host at the end of September each year to the World Championship qualifying round San Remo Rally. The event consists of five separate legs, three containing all tarmac stages and two all gravel, with overnight halts in Terrenia, Siena, Pisa and San Remo itself. The Italian round of the World Championship Series is, of course, an absolute must for the Lancia Martini team, even though they realise their 037 Lancias have been superseded by the new breed of four-wheel drive rally car. Lancia had cars entered for Marco Alain and Ilka Kivimaki, Attilio Bettiger, co-driven by Maurizio Parisino, who was making a return to the co-driver's seat after breaking his leg in an accident on the Costa Smeralda rally. The two works cars gave just under 300 brake horsepower from their Arbath supercharged 2,111cc engines and depending on the gear ratios used gave them a maximum of 109 and 118 miles an hour on tarmac and gravel respectively. Alain was aiming to improve his standing in the drivers championship over rival Stig Blomqvist. Backing the two works cars were privately entered but work supported 037s for Biasson, in the Totip sponsored example, and Vodifieri. Plus two more for Cunico in the Goldie Italia backed version and Tabaton in the Olio Fiat car which carried a colour scheme that brought memories back of the old Fiat 131 Arbath rally cars. One point of interest at the Lancia garage was the Lancia Trevi Saloon, built by engineer Giorgio Pianta and his team which featured four-wheel drive from two engines. One fitted conventionally under the bonnet and the other where the rear seat should be. It is intended to be used as a test bed, particularly for tyre development, for the four-wheel drive 038 Lancia, which will appear, if everything goes according to plan, on the 1985 Thousand Lakes Rally. Main opposition to the home team came from the new force on the rally scene, Peugeot Talbot Sport. Fresh from their success on the Thousand Lakes Rally, they had two 205 turbos entered for Thousand Lakes winners Ari Vatanen and Terry Harriman and Jean-Pierre Nicolas Charlie Pasquier. The Peugeots gave around 350 brake horsepower from their turbocharged 1,775cc engines. The main concern for the team was brake fade, which they experienced on the Tour de Course Rally. For San Remo, however, huge air ducts had been fitted from the roof which they were confident would solve the problem. Morale in the Peugeot team was high. After all, they had entered three World Championship events with the car, led the first two for a period and won the third, an impressive start for the new team. The third major team on the event was Audi, not having as much success this season with the new Quattro Sport as they had expected. Walter Roll had completed three weeks of testing before the event in an effort to improve the car's performance, particularly to improve the torque of the 500 plus brake horsepower engine and also to try and resolve the handling of the car, which at times can be unpredictable. A second car was entered for Stig Blomqvist, who was having his first outing in a Quattro Sport. The first leg of the event took place in the hills above San Remo an area characterised by narrow, twisty roads. Spectators in their tens of thousands flocked to the area, causing chaos as they abandoned cars everywhere and anywhere in their efforts to see the rally. For last year's winner, Elaine, stage one was a disaster, as only 500 yards into the stage, the right rear tyre blew, and he completed the rest of the nine and a half mile stage like this, taking 17th fastest time. Mickey Biasson and Walter Roll set first and second fastest times, followed by Bettiger, then Vatanen, who knew his advantage came once the rally got onto the gravel stages. Fifth fastest was Tabaton. The main drama was to come on the second stage, however, when the throttle on Walter Roll's quattro jammed wide open, sending him off the road into the spectators. The resultant delay whilst an ambulance was summoned meant the stage was cancelled. Initially, yes, but some four hours later the decision was reversed amid much controversy. This dropped Roll down to eighth overall at the end of the first leg instead of third. The delay on stage two meant that the final stage of the day was run in darkness before a long run down the autostrada to Terenia, 
a small holiday resort just north of the port of Livorno on Italy's west coast. Apart from Roll, the only other crew having major problems was Cali Grundle and Peter Dickman in the Group A Golf GTI, who had a slow roll on stage two, but continued minus the front screen. On the seafront in Terenia, in front of a huge partisan crowd, the leading cars pull into Parc Ferme. Mickey Biasson lies first overall, only one second ahead of Bettiger. Fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh places are also held by Lanchias, which gives the crowd plenty to cheer about. Roll is in eighth place, following his off on stage two, with Chirato five seconds behind in the Conrero Manta 400. The top ten is rounded off by Stig Blomquist. But what of the number three position? That is held by Ari Vatanen, whose car, like that of teammate Nicholas, is receiving a complete suspension and gearbox change, ready for the gravel stages which lie ahead over the next two days. The first stage of the second day, and the spectators are still around in their thousands, presenting problems not unlike Portugal. Fastest car over the 12 and a half kilometer stage, Vatanen's Peugeot eight seconds ahead of a very hard-charging Marco Alain. Roll beats teammate Blomquist, who shares an identical time with Bettega, by two seconds. The others press on in determined fashion, but know that now the rally is onto gravel stages, the advantage lies very much with the four-wheel drive cars, who begin to draw inexorably ahead. Jean-Pierre Nicholas confessed to not having the courage to travel at speed along roads lined with trees and spectators, plus the fact he suffers from gout. Special Stage 12 was a new addition to the San Remo Rally and featured a concrete river crossing. First into view, the battered lancia of Mickey Biasson, who had attacked the scenery, losing water from the radiator and almost cooking the engine. Bettiger was next along, way off the pace, with third man through Vatanen setting fastest time, 44 seconds quicker. Roll continued his chase with second fastest time, 11 seconds behind Vatanen. Marco Alain, driving at 101%, was third fastest. Nicholas, although down in 11th position, was beginning to move up the leaderboard, setting sixth fastest time on this stage. Budifieri was impressing in the second tow tip car whilst the two other 037s of Punico and Tabaton shared equal times here. The runners further down the field were to suffer mixed fortunes, not the least Lube, who rolled his Alpha GTV into retirement. Christian Rio, who put his Citroen off the road, and the impressive youngster Del Zoppo, who retired his Talbot with a broken axle. No problems for Ari, though, whose car gets routine service while he gets the chance of a refreshing spray from his wife, Rita. Ari, when we spoke to you last night, you said you were confident today of taking some time back off the lanchers once you got onto the gravel. I, I was quite right, wasn't I? So how much time have you taken back? I don't know precisely, but uh, anyway, quite a bit anyway, so it's going nicely. Leading by one minute at this point of time. No problems with the car? No, not at all. Just adjusting it to my liking and... Uh, so you're very so happy with it's the situation? Going nicely, yes, yeah? going nicely, yes. Going nicely. Very well, thank you. By late afternoon on the second day, a clear pattern had emerged. Vatanen was dominating the stage times. He now had a clear lead over Roll and Blomquist, who lay second and third overall, respectively. Marku was driving with all the fervour and passion he could muster, setting incredible times in the process to lie fourth overall. Fellow Lancia drivers Biasson, Bettiger, Tabaton and Kuniko held the next four positions. The gap between Biasson and Bettiger never more than seconds whilst the others were over three minutes in arrears. Budifieri was to finish his rally on this stage when he comprehensively destroyed the car after a multiple roll, fortunately without injury. Leading Group A was Kali Grundle's goal, which lay in 11th position. Ahead, Chirato's Opel, whilst now up to 9th position, despite the gout, 
Jean-Pierre Nicholas. As the sun fades over the hills of Tuscany, crews head towards an overnight halt in Siena. A few miles outside the town, the service crews await their charges. Peugeot, Lancia and Audi are grouped within yards of one another. The mechanics relax, discuss the day's happenings and even find time to show that despite the intense rivalry on the stages, they can still be friends. First car to arrive is Mickey Biasson, who is now down to sixth place overall. Apart from his slight off on stage 12, he has had no major problems and is proving to be a young man with a bright rallying future ahead. Bettiger lies 29 seconds behind him. He too has had a trouble-free run. In the Peugeot camp, all is smiles as Vattenen arrives with almost a three-minute advantage over Roll. There have been no problems with the car and the entire team are justifiably confident of increasing their lead with a further 17 gravel stages the next day. Particularly as over the 17 gravel stages that had just taken place, Ari had set 15 fastest times. During the night, it rained. This was stage 12 from the previous day with the concrete river crossing, which now lies under four feet of brown muddy water. It was to have been the second stage of the third day. Needless to say, however, it was cancelled. The following stage, and Roll sets fastest time, beating Vattenen by a scant second. Third fastest Blomqvist, despite catching the rear of the car with his sideways driving technique. Everyone expects Marcus to be the next car flying into sight, but it's not to be. A broken Conrad heralds the end of Marcus' challenge as he coasts through the stage into retirement. Biasson also bangs the rear of the car, but still beats Bettiger. These two having a real ding-dong battle. Nicholas and Kuniko share equal times, whilst Chirato storms through to beat Tabaton by 10 seconds. Special stage 30, through the maize fields east of Siena. Vatterman storms through, still at the head of the pack. Roll, however, takes three seconds off him, but still lies over three minutes behind. Next, of course, Blunquist, who knows he only needs to finish in the top four to clinch the driver's championship, now that Elaine is out. Nicholas has moved up another couple of places and lies seven. Ahead of him, the three launchers of Biasson, Bettiger and Tabaton. The risks taken in bringing pictures to your screens was vividly highlighted on the next stage, when two Italian film cameramen were knocked down and injured by a wayward Citroen Visa. Later in the same day, Nicholas bowled over an Austrian cameraman who was fortunate to get away with only slight bruising.
As the sun begins to sink, there are only six more stages before a welcome halt in the famous town of Pisa. No one had yet challenged Vatanen, who continued to extend his lead, which by this point was in excess of four and a half minutes. The main talking point of the event so far, apart from the demoralizing performance of the Peugeot, of course, had been the behavior of the spectators, who swamped every stage and service point in their thousands. This will be the last we shall see of Blomqvist. Like Elaine, his engine also cries enough, and he retires just before Pisa. A cold, wet, miserable afternoon in Pisa, shortly before cars depart for a long haul north along the autostrada to complete the final two legs of the rally in the hills behind San Remo. Vatanen's lead was now just over five minutes. Roll in second place had a comfortable buffer of four minutes to Biasson, so it looked as if it was all over, bar the shouting. The fourth leg consisted of seven all tarmac stages, which finished back in San Remo at two o'clock in the morning. No major dramas occurred. Roll lost first and second gears on the first stage of the night, but never looked like falling into the clutches of the Lancias behind him. Indeed, it was a fairly uneventful night's rallying, other than for Kuniko putting his Lancia off the road and out of the event. The fifth and final leg began at 10.30 in the evening, finishing back on the San Remo seafront at 9.30 the following morning. The weather conditions for the final night can only be described as absolutely appalling. Torrential rain and gale force winds had caused havoc on the narrow, twisty mountain roads. Mud and debris was being washed down onto the roads, causing dreadful problems for drivers committed to notes and suddenly meeting unseen and uncharted hazards. Both Vatanen and Roll had massive spins, but Cerato did the job properly, destroying the Manta 400 after a good run up to that point. By now, some crews were demanding the rally be stopped. Conditions in the hills were just far too dangerous. The weather picked up slightly, and the organizers said no. The inevitable happened. Vatanen had a monumental spin after rounding a bend and finding the road completely awash. He got away with it, with nothing worse than damaged lights. Walter Roll was not so lucky. An end-over-end -end roll down the road meant the end for him. Walter was badly bruised and shocked, as was co-driver Geisdorfer. Back on the seafront for the finish, the sun shone trying to lift everyone's spirits at the end of a rally that seemed to have more negative memories than positive ones. On the positive side, the emergence of a much more mature Ari Vatanen, superbly complemented by Terry Harriman, and of course, the new super supercar, the Peugeot 205 Turbo. No one can deny that it will be the car to beat in 1985. Bettiger stole second place from Biasson on the final night after the youngster clouted a rock face and collected a puncture. Fourth went to a delighted Tabaton. Fifth, despite niggling problems with the car and his gout, Jean-Pierre Nicholas. Calais Grundle took sixth overall and first Group A by a staggering 21 minutes.